I'd like you to meet a, a, a believer who was a part of this church. Did you know the Bible introduces us to a believer that was actually a part of this church? And let's meet her. It's a, a woman, a woman of God. And so to do that, we'll go to Acts chapter 16. And it's, I, I tell you, I've always been amazed always been amazed as I've read this passage in Acts chapter 16. We're not given her full name, but we're given her, probably her first name in Acts chapter 16. And I thought it would be well for us to uh, maybe just get an inside look to what life was like 2,000 years ago there in the city of Thyatira. And God gives us that window. Um, it's not a large window, but still, it, it gives us um, some insight. So in Acts chapter 16 and verse number 14, and a certain woman named Lydia, there's the introduction from God. And that's interesting. Her name defined means uh, uh, she's from Lud. Now that's, that's an ancient city, uh, Lud, I thought. Um, we, we're given her occupation. You can see that. God gives us that. She's a seller of purple. And uh, so the way, um, the way this dye, okay, and it, it's a dye. It's a purple dye. I don't know if any of you dye your clothing or if any of you have ever dyed your clothing. I think you can still, to this day, go into the store and get, what is it, fabric dye. So, you know, that's nothing new. This is a practice that's been going on for, uh, well, at least this long seller of purple. Um, the purple is from a, uh, a seashell, and it was uh, most commonly used by royalty, by government officials. Uh, it was, um, it was uh, sold and it was expensive. Um, of the city of Thyatira, there were given where she lived, where she worked, what she did. That's quite a bit. And um, the Bible says, which worshiped God. Um, and then, look at this. It's, it seems like such a Small, maybe insignificant statement, but I'll tell you what, it's profound. Um, heard us. Did you catch that? She heard us. What do you suppose Paul was saying that Lydia heard? Amen. Amen. And he preached Christ. And uh, Lydia heard. Um, and then I want you to see something else. Um, whose heart, and I think this is profound, whose heart the Lord opened. Now, we were out, not yesterday, but uh, be two Saturday, Saturdays ago, and on that outreach, Brother C.L. was along, and uh, I remember Brother C.L. saying uh, he had given that, um, he had gone to a house, and uh, the, the, the woman of the house wanted nothing to do with 
the gospel information that he was attempting to present there at the door. But the man of the house came up and uh, he accepted it, right, Brother CL? He accepted. You know? And then uh, you made this statement um, uh, that nothing's going to happen unless the Lord opens their heart. I think this is just profound. Um, so Paul's mandate is to do what? It brings us back to the Great Commission, which is what? It's to preach the gospel. And that's what Paul is doing. He's preaching the gospel. And here is a woman from the very city that we're, have, we've been looking at in Revelation chapter 2, Thyatira. And she heard... Now, Paul says us, so, uh, and I believe his, uh, I believe his companion, if I'm not mistaken, was a man by the name of Silas. Yeah, I believe it is in Paul and Silas. Remember this principle, Jesus always, um, always sent them out in groups of how many? So here's the point. They never went out alone and neither should we you know I'm so thankful I, I can't go unless somebody goes with I can't go out alone it's and so um, but whose heart the Lord opened and that's what we're going to look at that uh, this is the doctrine of illumination, or another way of stating that is spiritual enlightenment. And that's precisely what happened when she heard the gospel. Uh, the Lord enlightened her, illuminated her, and um, it's an important doctrine. Uh, so our part is to go to preach the gospel, proclaim the gospel, get the gospel out there. But as it concerns the heart, that's the Lord's business. I just think it's one of the most profound verses in all of God's word to me because it shows the way of God. It shows how uh, this is intended by God to work. Um, that she attended, uh, that is, she gave her attention, she gave her attention unto the things which were spoken of Paul. You know, there's been such a movement to shut down the proclamation of the gospel are you aware of that to stop it I wonder why what could possibly be behind um, this movement to stifle to hinder to stop the preaching of the gospel we well, see what happens when people hear the gospel um, not all people, but in the case of Lydia from Thyatira, she heard and uh, her heart was opened. Wow. That's God's, that's what God does. It's what only God can do. Uh, it's, uh, it's all about the heart. So, um, now let's look at this doctrine of spiritual enlightenment when God turns the light on in someone's heart and dispels that darkness. And, um, and then uh, if we have time, we'll come back to the uh, uh, other events in this uh, 16th chapter of Acts. So 
Um, but let's, let's begin in Psalm chapter 119. And, um, but I guess the, the point I'm making is God commands us about what we should be doing, but only God can do what only God can do as it concerns the heart. Um, but Lydia had to hear, she had to hear the gospel, she had to hear the gospel, and upon hearing the gospel, then um, the Lord opened her heart. So in that order, they must, the church is to go and preach the gospel, get the gospel out there, and um, and uh, she heard the gospel, and then the Lord uh, opened her heart. That's what only God can do. Now, uh, Psalm 119 and uh, verse, look at this, verse 105, and uh, as we think about the fact that she heard God's word, um, thy word is a lamp, as we think about um, illumination or enlightenment. Um, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word makes it possible for us to see the way everything really is. Uh, not what the world tells us it is, but the word of God brings us out of the dark. Psalm uh, chapter 18, and let's look some more. Psalm 18, and we'll have another reference in Psalm as well, but So we don't have to stumble around in the dark because we have the light of God's word. Um, so Psalm 18 and verse number 28, that's why it's so important to be in the word. And, uh, and you'll have the light of life. Uh, Psalm 18 verse 28 here the psalmist uh, says, for thou wilt, look at this, light my candle. And that's what he did to Lydia. That's what only God can do. But he does that by his word. This is the power of the gospel. Um, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness and um, I don't want to spend my life stumbling around in the dark by God's word I want to see everything for what it truly is and then um, uh Back to uh, chapter 119 and verse 130. You know, you can get hurt stumbling around in the dark. And I think that's why we uh, keep a flashlight handy. So we can see the way, we can see the, the dangers, we can see the pitfalls, uh, and uh, we can see our way through safely. Um, Psalm 119, verse 130. Um, look at this. And this is what happened to Lydia. The entrance of thy words giveth light. This is enlightenment or illumination. Um, 
it giveth understanding unto the simple. And then uh, back to Acts, uh, but chapter 26 this time, Acts chapter 26. Oh, listen, we need to be spending time in the light of God's word. Uh, if we're going to make it intact, if we're going to make it intact through this world as we sojourn. <laughs> and uh, hopefully that's what God finds us doing, reaching for the light. Do you ever use your uh, cell phone flashlight? Anybody use your cell phone flashlight? Do you know how to turn it on, Brother Cecil? You better teach him how to turn that flashlight on. Anybody use your cell phone flashlight? Uh, this, this, I'm sorry, this past week. Anybody? Okay. Uh, you don't remember the last time you used your cell phone flashlight? That's okay. <laughs> or a flashlight. Yeah, any flashlight. You know, any flashlight. Um, you reach for that light. Why? You reach, why do you? To see. Um, is it without that light you can't see? It's a very simple illustration. Why would we ever think we can see our way through life without the light of God's word? And this light we should reach for, not occasionally, but but daily. <laughs> and. Um, All right, uh, Acts 26 and verse 18. Uh, this is the work that God uh, has given Paul to do, along with uh, Silas and others, um, to open their eyes. I'm not talking about your physical eyes here, your spiritual understanding, and uh, to turn them from darkness to light and from the, and from the, uh, and what lurks in the darkness, the power of Satan. And by the light of God's word, he wants us to be turned from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. Wow. So um, this light is, is absolutely essential in our walk with whom? With God. You're not going to be able to see how to walk with God apart from the light of his word. You're just not going to be able to see your, see your way in your walk with God. I mean, this is the light. Uh, that they may receive forgiveness, which um, is, and we'll look more, but what happened in Lydia's life, uh, that, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, uh, how do you how do you suppose we're going to see our sins? I mean, right? You, you have to use a light in a place of darkness to to see everything else. Well, what light has to be turned on in order for us that we may see our sins? The Word of God. Yeah, it's by the Word of God that by the by the light of God's Word that. <laughs> We can see our sins against God. And, uh, of course, God's ultimate <clears throat> end and aim is <clears throat> that we may receive forgiveness of sins. But you have to, you have to see um, the reality that all have sinned and uh, come short of the glory of God. Uh, and inheritance among them, which are 
<clears throat> everything that, um, the, every blessing, every blessing, every good gift is uh, in the person of Jesus Christ. And in Christ, we have this inheritance. All of God's blessings, um, among them which are sanctified um, by faith, set apart, set apart from the world, uh, set apart from the lost, the unsaved, set apart from the unforgiven, sanctified, uh, set apart unto God for his um, eternal purposes, for his honor and glory, sanctified, set apart, and, and that's by faith that is in me, Jesus says to Paul, that is in me. So um, the light is indispensable uh, then for a person to uh, come to know Christ as Savior. Wow. Lydia heard, she heard um, the uh, gospel as Paul taught, as Paul preached. Go to 2 Corinthians uh, and uh, made a profound difference in her life. 2 Corinthians, but not just her life, I mean, <clears throat> chapter 4. Give this a look. <clears throat> Second Corinthians, um, chapter four, and I—I I really believe uh, the greatest treasure you have is God's word. Um, you know, a lot of people are out looking for treasure. <laughs> a lot, of, right? A lot of people are. Oh, I wish I could find treasure. You have a treasure. You have a treasure. You're holding it right there. And uh, hmm. none greater. <clears throat> Look at this, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined, where? Uh, in our hearts. which is exactly what happened <clears throat> to Lydia. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of, God puts a face on it, in the face of Jesus Christ. Hath shined in our hearts uh, so we, we could say, what then is God's, um, <clears throat> what is God's um, uh, light that illumines the heart? Jesus Christ, and um, all of this accomplished uh, by God's word. I mean, oh wow. Uh, go to Ephesians chapter 1. This is... Um, an important doctrine, teaching, illumination. Um, and that's what only God can do. This is a matter of the heart. And God deals in matters of the heart. Um, you know, we, we, can, we, can, uh, we can share the gospel if they'll let us, if they'll give us just a moment in time. Um, uh, but uh, only God can take it to the heart, illumine, illuminate the heart, uh, enlighten the heart. Only God can do that. Now, Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 18, uh, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, <clears throat> there's the word again, enlightened, um, Again, uh, not the physical eyes, but the spiritual eyes, um, that ye may know 
what is the hope of his calling. By the way, how does God call us to Christ? By what means does God call us to Christ? Well, go back to Lydia. L Lydia, what happened first before she came to Christ? She heard what? She heard God's word. Paul was preaching God's word. I mean, this is the light. You know, it's like, um, um, well, we're, we're in a dark place. I mean, the world is full of darkness. And you have this one light. You have this one light beaming, and everywhere is dark. And um, what effect do you suppose one light in, in a vast expanse of darkness would have upon those who were in that darkness? I mean, you were in being overwhelmed by darkness, right? You've all been in the cave where they turn the lights out. Now hold your hand in front of your face, you know. And there was just one light. What effect do you suppose that, you, where would you go? Would you go uh, out further into the darkness or do you think you might, you, you might try to get to the light? Well, this is the light. This is it right here. And... Uh, Ephesians 1, verse, uh, um, the eyes, verse 18, uh, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. Um, his calling. His calling. How many of you growing up had parents that would come to the door of the house and yell your name out. Did you live in a neighborhood like that? Anybody besides me? Did you guys live in a neighborhood like that? You know, some parents use a bullhorn. Did you know that it's a bullhorn? It's so embarrassing. Oh, no. And, and some parents, the first name is not adequate. They use your first, middle, and last name. And then everybody knows who it is. And everybody knows whose parent it is. That's yelling at the top of their lungs for you to come home. And, and then sometimes they'll put this little ending on it. Uh, you know, Dinner's ready! <laughs> you know, I mean, the world we grew up in, huh? Well, you know, you're being called. Well, that's what God does. You see it there. Uh, his calling. And by his word, he is calling you to Jesus Christ, to the light. Uh, that you, that you uh, may be saved. So that's what happened to Lydia. See, I mean, there's a lot packed into that one verse concerning Lydia as it concerns this important teaching of enlightenment. I mean, this is what was happening. First um, Peter chapter two, if you would, please. First Peter, first Peter. Did you ever do that, Brother Cecil? Did you ever holler out the front door for the kids to come in? Yeah, you know, we call that the we call that the good old days. Oh, wow. Well, um, I won't ask any more questions about that. All right. First uh, Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9. Sure good to see all of you here uh, this Lord's Day. And uh, just trusting the Lord as we, as we uh, walk along. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Um, but... Ye are a chosen, uh, that's an interesting word, in the Greek it's eklektos, uh, in the English it's elect. Isn't that interesting? 
God says, ye are a chosen generation, um, a royal priesthood, uh, the priest, um, the work of the priest, um, the priest, what that means is when you're in Christ, if, if you have come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you are given the blessing of direct access to God which is what the high priest had. It was the, it, it's called the priesthood of the believer, but in the Old Testament, there was only one who could go into the tabernacle or the temple into one area and then only once a year, and it was the Holy of Holies. And as a priest, you can come right into the very presence of God. Wow. I mean, if you, if you could enter into God's immediate presence, because the Shekinah glory was there above the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies. The high priest would go right in, and but he'd, he'd better be sure He'd better be sure that his sins were atoned, were covered before he went in. If he went in without his sins being covered by the blood of the lamb, uh, they'd have to pull him out by a cord attached to his ankle because he would drop dead. That's the holiness of God. Now, the reason we are able to come into, uh, into the very presence of God and that not happen to us is because our sins have been not covered, but they've been cleansed when we come into Christ Jesus. I mean, it's so incredible. Now, let me read this verse uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. So, you know, somebody says, well, if I, if I, could, if I could talk to God, if I, could, if I could, you know, have a face-to-face with God, yeah, I'd talk to him. Well, you, you do. So, how is your prayer life? You do. This is the priesthood of the believer. Um, how amazing is that? Uh, chapter 2, verse 9 of 1 Peter. But your chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. We're different, folks. If you know Christ, you're different. Different from Different from what? Tell me, class. What are we different from? What, what are we peculiar? We're different from what? What would you say, Louis? From the world. We're different from the world. Or the unbeliever. We're different. And, uh, and, and you know, uh, a person who is in Christ and has the spirit of Christ dwelling within you know, the world will observe you, listen to you, watch you. And if, um, if your walk with God is as it should be, then the world will think, what about you? <laughs> that person is, fill in the blank, please. That person is strange that person and they might even go so far as to say that person is is well yeah yeah that's another one hadn't thought of that one and some say have you noticed what a weirdo he is or she is you know so you're different 
uh, um, a peculiar people that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you, called you out of what class? Out of darkness. I'm so glad God did. Now, here's where my fault is. I'm going to tell you, be just honest with you. My fault since March 11th of 1972, which is the date that God called me out of the darkness of the world, my fault has been a failure not to reach for the light enough. And uh, that has invited um, uh, consequences in my life. Well, let me just put it this way. If I had it all to do again, I, I, would, I would hope that I'd have the light in hand for every step. Yeah. You know, I'm, what are you saying? Well, um, maybe let's help you to relate. Have you ever made a decision to just do something independent of prayer and the light? You just go and do it? And you didn't even talk to God about it? You just wanted to do it, so you did it. And you end up wishing you had never done it, you know. Yeah. All right. Um, Brother Thane, you hurting? You hurting? You got pain? Yeah, okay. Um, we're done here. Um, who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Into his marvelous light. So, in conclusion, um, how did all of this happen? How, how is it that Lydia was enlightened? Well, um, you do know in the world there's a movement to shut down the teaching, the preaching of God's word. Why do you suppose that is? Faith cometh by what? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. She heard, faith came, the light came on. Okay, that's all we've got time for. And uh, so we'll take a break and... Uh...